Hi, I'm Irving. Welcome to Captain Shazam. I mean... And now, back to Shazam. Mentor and Billy are driving through what looks like maybe southern New Mexico or somewhere like that. They're in a desert, and Billy is excited about a book he found. The State Historical Society map that shows all the old gold mines. It didn't cost anything. <laughs> I doubt you're going to find gold on any map you got for nothing. Gee, people have a way of taking all the fun out of things when they're getting old. Der, older. Thing is, Mentor is right. Places used to publish tourist maps like that, and the only mines they would take you to are mines that ran out of ore ages ago. That's why they were abandoned. Anybody who thinks they'll make a killing off one of those maps is, well, about as gullible as Billy is. The elders call. They're right on top of things. We haven't even met another person yet. Maybe they just want to gab. Gold is where you find it, Billy. In other words, don't put too much faith in that map. But friendship and understanding... That too is gold. The old exist to make the way easier for the young, but all of the young to make listen. But I listen to you. You have learned, Billy. Before this day is out, you'll meet some who have not. Or maybe they have something else on their minds. With these guys, you can never tell. While Billy and Mentor kick Solomon's words around, they come upon what is to be the actual subject of those words. <laughs> I think we found the young who do not listen. Oh, he's just an old miser loaded with gold who never gives any away. And worst of all, he's ignorant. Yeah, all he ever says is get, get, get. How many chances have you given him to say anything else? Did you try saying hello? That might be a good idea. Come on, fellas, let's go. Uh, we get you, man, we get you. Yeah. Nope, he's different and that's bad. I want to take each of these boys home and spank their parents. Thank you, partners. Hey, uh, can we give you a ride? Why? Well, we're all going the same direction. We might even be looking for the same thing. You see, I got this map. You pay anything for that? No, I got it for nothing. That's what it's worth. As usual, shared laughter loosens things up and he gladly accepts a ride. At least until this happens. Now that's what I call one bent wheel. Well, I better get the jack. Although I don't know how I'm going to get it under there. Wait, I got just what you need in my camp. Beulah will get you out. Beulah? She must be one very strong lady. <laughs> Beulah ain't no lady at all. That's my donkey. <laughs> no, my camp's not more than 100 yards around the bend. I'll get her now. I'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> all right, sir. Why is it that real-life creatures seem to beat technology so often? Except in this case, a 700-pound donkey isn't likely to be able to deal with a multi-ton motorhome. Billy has a better idea. Shazam! <laughs> Yes, he's back, but only for this episode. I'm not sure how that came about, if they shot the episodes out of order or what, but we do get Jackson Bostwick one more time. Captain Marvel lifts the motorhome up onto a big rock so Mentor can change the tire. Or he can save time and effort and straighten the wheel himself. They drive into the prospector's camp just as he's untying Beulah. He doesn't ask any questions, he just says he would have liked to see whatever happened. He's an easygoing sort, which is why nobody can figure out why those kids were giving him so much trouble. So tell me, where's your gold mine? Well, my mine is right around the hill, but where the gold is, I couldn't say. I never found much gold. It's Come on, I'll show you my digs. <laughs> now, we know there's no gold in it because he's willing to show it to people he just met. If there was a decent vein there, he'd be concerned about claim jumpers and wouldn't give up the location. Well, as far as we go, this report starts getting lit. We can't go any further. Oh, it ain't safe. For nobody but me, anyway. Are you sure it's safe for you? There's a little hole there that leads to where he's actually digging, but it's just big enough for one person to squeeze through. That sure sounds safe. Outside, that group of boys is back. They're examining our friend's camp, and we finally find out why. Somewhere along the way, we'll learn that he goes by seldom seen Slim. We wait and see which direction they come from. Don't know where to look for his gold mine. Oh, why bother with that? I mean, all we gotta do is find where old Seldom already took out. Taking his gold would be stealing. 
digging his mind would just be like swiping watermelon. Uh, right. When he grew up, he ran for Congress. At the camp, Billy asks the prospector, where would you look for gold if you were in my place? Right there. Ken Taylor Flats. Are you sure there's gold there? Nope. But I ain't sure they ain't. In other words, he hasn't looked there yet, and apparently neither has anybody else. You might as well be the first. Go get your mining gear. Oh, you don't have any? Well, that is a problem. But we have a more immediate problem. The boys have found Slim's mine tunnel. Look, gold. This nugget must weigh more than half a pound. It doesn't even bigger one behind that stick of wood. You might want to consider the possibility that that stick of wood was in that spot for a reason. <laughs> that would be the reason. And by the way, you don't find huge chunks of gold in the wild like that. That's not gold or Slim would have collected it by now, don't you think? They skedaddle on out of there with their nice big haul of iron pyrite and decide that's enough. The mountain is telling them to stay out and they're inclined to listen. You know, if old Seldon can pass up this kind of gold, what kind you reckon he's got back at his camp? I'll bet that's where the real money is. Look, we took this out and that's okay. But we're not going to take from his camp. That's stealing. Okay. Okay, stay poor. See if I can. Not as poor as I was half an hour ago. There's always one. Billy's in a stream panning for gold. You might have more luck if you tried working the edges of the stream, where the water flows slower. Yeah, but it seems to me the faster the water flows, the more gold will be washed down. Well, it doesn't work out that way. Well, on which side? <laughs> You're already in it. Why don't you try this side? For one thing, that pan looks more suitable for eating stew than it does for panning gold. It's way too deep. You want a shallow one so you can swish the water and sand around, gradually sloughing off the useless stuff while the heavier gold stays in the bottom of the pan. And don't expect to find any huge life-changing nuggets. Surface mining, or placer mining as it's called, usually yields varying amounts of gold dust. And unless you're in a real hot spot, you won't find much of that either. Don't ask how I know that. But be careful, you might... You might trip. Thanks a lot! Meanwhile, Greedy Kid has a plan to steal all that gold. He goes to Slim's camp and unties Beulah, trying to make her run off. I assume so Slim will have to go after her and the kid can go through his camp without being detected. Hey, what you do? You call dirt kid, the sheriff's gonna hear about this! He got detected. He runs away with Slim hard on his heels. The kid isn't watching where he's going and falls off a high rock. Oh my, oh my. Now just take it easy, young fella. You gonna hurt me? No, heck no. You pretty well handle that job for yourself. I'm gonna help you. Tell me why. Well, because you need it. He doesn't seem so crazy now, does he? Really, he has the touch of a master surgeon and he's genuinely concerned and inclined to help. Basically, he's a nice guy and you've been treating him like crap. Bet you feel pretty good about yourself along about now, huh? Slim heads off to get his first aid kit, which he keeps at the end of the mine tunnel, since, as he says, that's the only place he ever gets hurt. He's out of earshot when our boy remembers that they sort of destabilized the tunnel. Mr. Prospector is in danger. Oh, oh. Here, Beulah. Here. Hi, Over here. Oh. You gotta get me out of here! Good thing Beulah knows how to do that. He puts the rope on himself and Beulah hauls him up. Oh, man, you gotta get me out of here! It's a really good thing Beulah understands English so fluently. Slim is in the tunnel discovering the damage the boys did to his bracing. We have a major cave-in. The other boys are on their way back to check on their friend, but now we all have to work together because Slim is trapped in that tunnel. Billy does his thing and Captain Marvel heads off to the rescue. What's going on here? The old prospector's mine. I, th I think he caved in on old Selden. I think it was our fault. Well, we'll settle responsibility later. You stay here till the motorhome comes by. Right. 
It took me a bit to catch what that boy was calling him, and there seems to be some confusion about his name. I finally sorted out that the kid is saying seldom, as in his listing in the credits, seldom seen slim. But Mentor keeps calling him Sam. Maybe his script got smudged and he did the best he could. Or maybe somebody completely missed that boo-boo. Every time he moves a rock, two more fall down to take its place. That's what you get when you go prospecting on Mount Hydra. Time for Plan B. Get your Captain Marvel digger today. Only $299.99. So much more efficient and economical than dynamite. Quieter, too. That Stern Mountain, you had no right to do that to me. Caving in like that, that's plumb unfair. But I'm going to teach you a thing or two. You cave in on me, will you? I, just come... I don't think it was the mountain's fault. Maybe it was more like ours. Time to fess up. The boys explain and seldom apologizes to the mountain. Really. Thank you. You know, if you should ever decide to take up prospecting, I'd be mighty proud to partner with you. Well, I'll remember that, Seldom. <laughs> and Jackson Bostwick flies out of our television sets. We won't see him as Captain Marvel again. Seldom goes off to take care of Beulah after a little talk with the boys. What turn you around? Oh, Mr. Seldom. He's a lot smarter than we gave him credit for. You know, he talked to me just like a regular doctor. You know, I haven't been comfortable with these things since we took them. Let's give them back. He finally figured out that taking from Seldon's mine is also stealing. Sam, there's something we took out of your mine. I guess you overlooked it. Hmm. Well, they're yours. You, you found them. Oh, yeah! Of course, you know, boys, them nuggets and a nickel will get you about an hour on a parking meter. <laughs> no, them little pieces is called iron pyrite. That's fool's gold. I hope somewhere along the way he'll show the boys how to tell the difference. It's not hard if you know one little trick. First one to tell me in the comments what that is gets a shout out in a future episode. Mr. Sam, how do you find real gold? Son, it sings to you like a nightingale. He says, come on, come on, and go someplace and hide. Slim isn't just a smart man, he's a poet. The boys go to look around. Mentor asks Seldom, what would you do if you hit the big one? <laughs> Probably covered up. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shuck, I wouldn't cut out to be rich. I, I'm a prospector. But you know, I just may have struck it rich today. Huh? You really think so? You know that tall kid? Yeah. He just asked me a straight out question. Sounded like he really wanted an answer. What's wrong with a little peace, love, and understanding? The boys struck it rich today, too. They found a resource for knowledge that they'll be mining for a long time. Mr. Sam, where do you think we should look to find real gold? Well, boys, if you've got the time to listen, I got the time to talk. When you didn't know him, you taunted him and harassed him. But now that you've discovered his humanity, you respect him. Next time, start there. Respect him even before you get to know him. It makes getting to know him a lot easier. But anyway, I was, I was coming down this mountain trail, and I heard this funny noise. And she went... Oh, 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 you did too. <laughs> Seldom seen Slim Sam's somebody really stole this one from me. The mining bug is a real disease. I know because my dad had it. He owned I don't know how many mineral claims in two states, and every so often we'd go to one of them and do some digging or panning. For a while he got into underwater dredging, where you use a little vacuum hose to suck up the dirt and gravel from the bottom of a stream and run it through a thing called a sluice box, which was supposed to separate the gold from the dirt. I might do a story time on that one of these days, because I got to go underwater in a wetsuit and a regulator and do the vacuuming. Anyway, the money he sunk into his mining ventures could have made him independently wealthy, because none of them really amounted to any major income. And so the f what? 
He enjoyed it. He enjoyed the outdoors, getting way back into a forest where the animals were and where humans hadn't fouled things too badly yet. He loved the hunt. For him, the biggest enjoyment was looking for it, trying to second guess where it went and hid, as Seldom put it. We, his family, never lacked for anything. In fact, I was a spoiled brat. And when he went off on his mining ventures, most often we went with him out with the trees, the animals, and the stars to keep us company. I couldn't trade that for anything. I'm glad you had fun, Pop. But it's not for me. One day, while he and I were with some of his mining buddies, a guy looked at me and said, Has the mining bug bit you yet? I said, No, I vaccinated myself against it. He looked at me like I had two heads. Getting back to the episode, we saw some nice complexity in those boys, too. At least the two that had lines. You could see from the start that they were fighting their consciences, and the way the boy named Raphael tried to justify raiding the mine was a nice bit of warped logic to get around the fact that he knew it was wrong. Our main instigator got several lessons, including don't assume things about people that you don't know, and you should listen to that little voice that tells you this is a bad idea. He also learned that Gula is smarter than he is. She didn't fall off any cliffs. I'm Irving, and I'll see you next time here on Captain Model, I mean Shazam.